this morning's guest and his wife decided to take a cruise. It ended seven years later. Learn about the amazing adventure coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're in the conference room of the new offices of the Myrtle Beach Herald at 4806 Northgate Boulevard here in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on cruising the world and we're visiting with an active contributor to the community, Doug Decker. Thank you Good very morning, much, Doug. Greg. Thanks so much for coming in early on a Tuesday morning with all these props. Well, Greg, I've been cruising the world. I've been cruising thousands of miles. I couldn't even find your office. I went to the wrong place this oh, morning. Oh, you kidding. But early I'm lucky. Home. Yeah, but yeah. luckily I came early, so I'm here on time. As a world cruiser, you'd think we'd have the opportunity to find the place, but that's great that you I did uh, find you it. got Thanks on the road very early. Yeah, yes. Sherry is a great guide. And, of course, you and Sherry both live on the south end, so uh, cruising on up. I mean, you all know that uh, trip up 17 we sure do. pretty well. What about all these tremendous props? Thank you so much for bringing that in. I understand you and Judy. Yes, co Ju uh, yeah, yeah, she said, well, do you need any props? And I said, yes. And so we started talking about them. And she said, she's going to give me a couple of them that if I broke them, I'm yeah, in big trouble. So right. you know the Tagwa nuts over here, which we'll yes, talk about in a minute. we'll get to those in a minute. Absolutely. How did you end up on the Strand, Doug? Well, Judy's mom lives in Georgetown, Judy's mom and dad. Oh. And uh, they retired there. Yeah. So we've been coming here a long time, but Judy came here first. She was an Ohio State student, came wow. down to Myrtle Beach, and was a waitress. Really? And the, yeah, and the and she, uh, during the summers, her parents were wondering what she was doing down here, so they <laughs> came down to check on her. Right. And when they did, they fell in love with South Carolina. Yes. And uh, that's how we're here. And so we've been traveling down here, and then uh, during our travels, our world travels, Judy needed a new knee. As a matter of fact, two new knees. New knees. New knees. Yeah. And so we knew that sometime we were going to have to stop our cruising and, right. and get a place to live. So during that recovery period, we started looking around at different places, and we found Heritage Plantation, the most wow. beautiful yeah. place around. It and is. we just fell in love with it, and we right. found a home there. And, and close to your parents-in-law, they're yes, still they're in Georgetown? Georgetown, right. right. Her Good. dad's passed away a few years oh, ago. Oh, sorry. So yeah. Uh, but it's great because we have every Sunday's uh, mother comes over and we have that. My son has recently moved here to to Litchfield, Jake. Uh, yeah. And he's a pilot, and so he comes. We have every Sunday as a dedicated day for family, if not more during the week. Wow, that's tremendous. That is tremendous. Everyone's made the Palmetto State home. And yes, you, they have. And you and Judy have three other boys. Four. Uh, Judy has two. One lives in Wisconsin. The other one is in Fort Myers. Right. And I have one in San Diego. And one here. And Jake so here. And yes, Jake here, yes. so I'm really lucky. That's tremendous. And San Diego is a great place. That ties into much of what we're about to highlight yeah, this it morning. Is. That's where we started from. As we think about getting on a boat, and of course I was, was thrilled to see, I believe it's a Beneteau. Yes, a Beneteau. So a nice connection here to, uh, yes. to Marion County, right. right up the street there. Exactly. And actually later this week we've got a guest in on Thursday, Bunny Beeson, okay. the founder and president of Wildlife Action, a fascinating yes. preservation location, 31 years headquartered there in Mullins, South okay. Carolina. So a great week. I hope you'll tune in later yes, this I week sure to will. catch Bunny. But of course, as you, as you all have planned, how did you determine that was the right boat? Is it a boat you'd had for a long time, or did someone say you got to get a Beneteau if no, you're going to travel? You know, uh, it, that's a good question because uh, someone just said, "Well, why don't you take the boat you have and see if you like cruising?" Because we hadn't determined that we were going to do what we've done. We, right. we, it started in kind of small steps, right. and we met some people on the dock who were members of the Seven Sea Cruising Association and they came over and said hello and they saw we were a member and we started talking to them and we asked them where they had gone and they said well they traveled around the world <laughs> and that's Buzz and Marine and we looked at Buzz and Marine and we said later God if they can do it maybe yeah. we can wow. but, so we took the very first step was to get the boat ready right. and when you're in a 37 foot boat to do offshore cruising for a long period of time, you need to do a lot of fixing it up. So as an engineer, I put in a water maker, I put in new stoves, I put in radar, I put in single sideband radios. I mean, right. it goes on right. and on. And all you have to do is just get your wallet out and just start throwing the money down oh, into, the, no. in, into the boat and you get it done. 
But it, it was quite an expensive thing. But is that it was, the case with all boat owners? I think it is. Big boats, it's they just, just keep throwing It's just it a in. wide open space. You just throw money in. But <laughs> there's a lot of reward, as you, you, you will see. I and so yeah. when we started out, we said, well, we're going to go to Mexico. So, you know, we started our way down to Mexico. I saw you all were getting it fixed up real quick. It was in San Diego. Yeah, for two years we worked on it. So that's a long time of fixing it up. But I was also working as a consultant at Johnson Controls because I had retired, but they kept me on the payroll. And so for that period of time, we worked on the boat. I did a little work at the office at back in Washington, D.C., working. Right. And then uh, when we launched off, uh, we thought maybe... Mexico, you know, Acapulco, yeah. that yeah. was the yeah. limit actually to the, to the insurance. And we weren't going to go any further than that. And then as we got going, uh, it really got hot in Mexico. Right. And we decided, God, you know, we got to get a little further south. And so we kept moving and moved our way down the coast and went to Guatemala and then to El Salvador. Right. And then we worked our way to Costa Rica. Right. And then we worked our way to the Panama Canal. Wow. And that was the start. And your wife had been a big boat lover. I mean, she loved the water. Or did either no. of y'all have this tremendous well, love? Well, I, I started sailing on Lake Michigan uh, while I was employed. And a friend of mine had a boat there and wow. actually bent, ended up buying his boat and then went and bought this boat. This was a brand new boat we bought in Chicago. Right. right. And um, so we, we never had the vision or... But I am a pilot, and I've been a, uh, an airplane pilot for a long time. So flying right. and sailing have a lot of, from a navigational standpoint, have a lot of similarities. And a lot mm -hmm. of people that are pilots also are sailors. Is that right? Yes. Interesting. And do you all have a name of the boat? Is the That's boat name? The boat's name is Limerence. Limerence? What Limerence. is that? Well, a psychologist, psychiatrist, psychologist uh, put together a word, Limerence, L-I-M-E-R-E-N-C-E. If you look it up on the on the internet you'll see that a boat's named after it. that's our boat no. and it's the state of love that when you meet your wife and your heart's pitter pattering and you know you can't sleep or or you know how that sense goes you know right. yeah sometimes it lasts a week you know sometimes a lot longer <laughs> for me my in my 25 years it's always it's i'm always love. in limerence still be so we yeah. named the boat limerence and it is a state of love and we still love the boat that's tremendous. Is the boat here with you all in, in Georgetown Palm, County? It's in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Okay, great. So we're going to use it from there and launch off and hopefully do some cruising out in the Bahamas. You planning another, not another worldwide no, no, cruise? No, yeah. just... Uh, that was enough. That's enough. After the two knees. Uh, yes, well, but everything worked out well, and we're glad to be back here yeah. and uh, be close to her mom. That is wonderful. Yeah, well, we've got some great props, and I okay. actually... Do you mind if we just get into some sure, of these? Sure, let's do there's it. There's probably a little story associated with each one. We've got the, this Mexico painted frog that viewers can probably see, he, see here. What, what's the... Well, that, the significance is that when we did our European travels, we don't see a lot of this kind of artifact. And this is from uh, Jaco, Mexico. Jaco, Mexico. Yes, it is. And uh, uh, Judy had a lot of other things that she wanted me to buy. But in the 37-foot sailboat, I couldn't put them in oh, the right. boat. You yeah, know, she yeah, had sure. tables and chairs and everything. So we bought small things, like this uh, plate here is this also from Mexico. And you can see how very beautiful. And this is all hand done. That's all hand painted? Yes, it wow. is. Wow. Wow. Absolutely. We've got these tremendous, uh, what I believe you said earlier, were tag taguanuts? Ta taguanuts, yes. And that's out of Panama. And... This is just unbelievable. We have probably uh, 15 or 20 of these Tagua nuts. Judy gave me permission to bring a few. They're very <laughs> delicate, as you can yeah, see. These are very delicate. And so, this, so these two turtles were what, added on? No, they, they glued are glued on. No, they're not glued on. They're all one piece. Oh, no. Yeah, they're one all, piece. Yes, I think they you are. can really get the significance of that one piece when you look at this, this spider, this tarantula here. Yes. This big spider. Wow one piece and viewers can see the parrot here which is magnificent and these were were purchased where these are uh, in the in, same in, location yes uh, in bazaars uh, and there are a lot of them for sale so uh, we would go into uh, open air uh, wow. places that they were selling them and uh, we, they're not inexpensive, I might say. So right. we didn't just run in and say let's get them all. We would look at them and touch them and, right. and determine and of course Judy would uh, grab my arm and say, you know, I think I love this one. And I would say, okay, so that week we would buy it because we spent quite a bit of time in Panama uh, right. both on both coasts, on the Pacific and the 
eastern coast. So mm -hmm. um, we got to be around a lot of those. And that's a, a mask. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I won't wear it because it uh, Inbera, may... Uh, Indians, uh, Indians, Indians, Indians. Indians. Inbera Indians. Inbera Indians in uh, Mexico. Right, uh, right. They're it's very beautiful. native. When you go to their... Uh, to see the significance of the back of these, which yes. are tremendous. What and the, the workmanship lot of that goes time yeah, all. A lot of workmanship in those. Mm. And uh, you go to their reservation, and uh, they live the way they, they've lived for uh, centuries. And it's just very beautiful, and they're very gracious. Uh, you, you don't drive up there, you have to take a boat up to their reservation, a canoe. Mm -hmm. um, but they're very hospitable, they're very friendly. When you come up, uh, they, they greet you, and they take you back to where their village is. It's, a, it's really a, a wonderful place. And they we come to, right up to the boat. Yes, and, they do, uh, a small boat, which yeah. uh, is a shuttle boat up there. Right, right. So, You've got some other magnificent, these molas here, I believe you pronounce her. Yeah, molas. Uh, and these came... Um, the San Blas Islands. San Blas Islands. Right. Now, first, let's talk about the San Blas Islands. They, you cannot have access to the San Blas Islands unless you're on a boat. Oh. And no ships go in there. Uh, one cruise ship, I think, is uh, permitted per every two weeks. Uh -huh. They're only there for three or four hours. Uh, the San Blas Islands are on the uh, southern side of, of uh, Panama. Right. And there are about 200 islands, and about 20 of them are occupied by Kuna Indians. The Kuna Indians are very thankful to the Americans because they were going to be annihilated by the Panamanians. They got in a, a war and a dispute, and the Americans came in and said, don't kill them all. Mm. So uh, as an American, when you're in there, they still you still feel a sense of uh, that thankfulness oh, of, that's great. and appreciation. Uh, they're a very small people. These people are the smallest, other than the pygmy, uh, sized people. You mean physically? Physically small. Mm -hmm. Very, very beautiful. The women are outstandingly beautiful, and they're all painted. They, they have, I wouldn't call it war paint, but they have decorative paint that they have on every day. Mm. Uh, they are the boss. They make the money. They, so they, these, these, these are reverse applica, which means what these applications. Yeah. Uh, this is red fabric that, that they that have yeah. on the back. Oh boy, yeah, look at that. So viewers can see that, that fabric and so the depth of it. Now, yes. multiple so, colors here. Multiple colors, but multiple depth. I yes, mean, so a, that's how they make right, them. Right. And so the the Kuna Indian the woman is in charge of the household, and we lived um, uh, when we had our boat there, Greg. We mm. lived about a mm. hundred yards from where they lived, and mm -hmm. we were very respectful never to go onto their beach or leave our boats mm. uh, unless we were pretty much invited to be there. Uh, what was interesting is in the morning, uh, the, w the women would be working on these molas, mm -hmm. and the husband would take off, and possibly with one of their sons, and would take off and uh, go out, and they go fishing. Oh, really? And they, yeah. he's the fisherman. Mm -hmm. And then she goes out during the day, too, and sells these to the, to the sailboats that come in. This, we're their basic uh, avenue for sales, and they also go into Panama and sell them in Panama, mm. in both Cologne, Panama, and in Panama City. So these these women are the entrepreneurs. They they raise all the money. They they uh, are kind of the bankers. The husband now does his fishing, brings it in, and he will sell us lobsters. And I never thought in my life that I would be sick of lobsters. But believe me, at the end of uh, the, our trip, I I couldn't eat any more lobsters. But every day <laughs> they come on, knock on your boat, and sell you either uh, it will sell you lobsters and right. other fish. Yes. Uh, very nice because it was just door-to-door -door travel. 